Okay, optimization. What is optimization all about? It's getting the most bang for your buck. So this is how calculus helps the real world. Okay? So, let's say that a certain type of fish needs 13.5 cubic feet of water in a tank. You are responsible for building the tank with the least amount of glass possible so you save the most amount of money for the company. That's your job. You're an engineer. All of you guys are engineers now, so you got to figure out how to build that to that cubic feet dimensions and use the minimum amount of glass possible. Okay? So, let's figure it out. What's now? This is a square based prism, so it's a side, a side, and a height. Okay, that's the dimensions we work with. So, what would be the volume of this? Well, yeah, but how what would be the formula for the volume of this? I asked a bad question. Way to get me on that one, Strom. S squared times H. Okay which is equal to 13.5, okay? So, it wants to know what is the minimum exterior surface or the minimum surface area. What's the surface area for this shape? We are ignoring the thickness of the glass, yes. Um, well, normally it's 6 squared, but it's Yeah, but it's not in this case. What's the area of the base? S squared. S squared. What's the area of the four sides? I, four, four times height. Four H. Four S H. Thank you, Megan. Because you have the base times the height to find the area of a rectangle. So that's a surface area. Now. To find minimums and maximums, we take the first derivative and set the first derivative equal to zero. zero. We want to take the first derivative of the surface area, but we have two different variables. We need to get it down to one. How do we get it from two down to one? Well, we're going to okay. use this. Yep. How do we use that? Divide by. Well, what would be the easiest to find? If we want to get S alone, we have to divide by H and then take the square root of each side. Would that be very nice? No. no. So let's get H alone. So we divide by S squared. So H equals 13.5 divided by S squared. So we're going to stick that in for H. So the surface area, quit arguing, is S squared plus 4S times 13.5 over S squared. So the surface area is S squared plus this S cancels with one of the S's. 4 times 13.5 is what? I think it's 54. Okay, that's the surface area formula. We spent all that time finding the surface area formula. Now, to find the maximum or minimum surface area, we do the first derivative of the surface area, which would be 2s minus 54 over s squared. Does everybody understand where we got the minus 54 over s squared? Okay, because that's the negative first in that. Set that equal to zero. Solve it. So 2s equals 54 over s squared. What do we do to each side? Multiply by s squared. So, 2s cubed equals 54, divide by 2, s cubed equals 27, take the cube root, let's cube root of 27, 3. So, this is 3, and this is 3. Now we got to figure out the height. How do we do that? Well, just stick it in here, 
It's 13.5 over 3 squared, which is 9. What's 13.5 divided by 9? How about 1.5? So, what's the surface area then? Well, the surface area would be s squared 9 plus 4 times 3 times 1.5. So, it's 9 plus 4 times 3 is 12. 1 half of 12 is 18. The surface area happens to be 27. Just don't go with this number every time. Okay? You might run into issues. Okay, surface area of that thing is 27 if you minimize the surface area. A sheet of paper. A piece of paper is to display 150 square inches of text. So let's draw a uh, piece of paper. There's 150 inches of square text. Now, you're going to need margins around the text because the text doesn't go all the way to the edge of the papers so the margins are one inch on each side and the top and two inches on the bottom okay what are the dimensions of the smallest piece of paper that can be used to have 150 square inches of text well in a rectangle you have a base times a height, right? Yeah. So the base times the height of the text equals 150. Okay? Now, the area of the paper equals the base of the paper. How long is the base of the paper? If this is B that goes from there to there, how long is the actual base of the paper? Well, it's B plus 1 plus 1, which is B plus 2. What's the height of the paper? Well, the height of the paper is H plus 3. Now, we have two different variables. We need to get it down to one variable. How do we get down to one variable? Not magic. Divide by H. We can divide by H. That's fine. So B equals 150 over H. So this is 150 over H plus 2 times H plus 3. So we FOIL this. So what's H times 150 over H? Just 150. What's 150 over H times 3? 450 over H. What's 2 times H? 2H. What's 2 times 3? Six. So the area of our paper should equal 2H plus 450 over H plus 156. What's A prime? Minus. You are good. Set it equal to zero. So 2 equals 450 over h squared. Multiply by h squared. So 2h squared equals 450. Divide by 2. h squared equals 225. What does h equal? 15. So if the height is 15, what would the base be? So, is it 10 by 15? And the answer is no. no, because the paper is 10 plus 1 plus 1, or 10 plus 2, which is 12, and 15 plus 3 is 18. Okay, did you get that? Do you want to see another one of those? No, not really? Okay, so we'll skip it then. All right, um, let's go to this one first. A function... Let's look at the graph of this function. Oop, I got to go down here. There we go. I got to go to the graph of this function, and we're going to change colors to this. 
What is 2x minus 3? Well, it's 0, negative 3, 1, negative 1, 2, 1, 3, 3, and so on. Okay, looks like that, right? Now, it is wondering, what is the x-coordinate for the point that is closest to the origin? It looks like it could be 1, or is it more somewhere else? Okay, how do we figure it out? Well, how do we find this distance here between the origin and whatever point is closest on this line? Well, if I'm looking for distance, I'd use the distance formula. Yeah. Okay. So the distance formula says, what's the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared? Well, what I'm doing here is this is like y2. Okay, and then, so x1, y1 is the point zero, 0, that's the origin. x2, y2 is x, and then 2x minus 3, the x value of this line, and then the y value of the line you get by plugging in the x value. Okay, so if we will figure out this distance, it's... 2x minus 3, oh, no, it's x minus 0 squared plus 2x minus 3 minus 0 squared. Or x squared plus 2x minus 3 squared. What's 2x minus 3 squared? 4x squared. So this would be minus 6x and minus 6x, which would be minus 12x plus 9. Yeah, you were. So the distance is the square root of 5x squared minus 12x plus 9. Now, what's the first derivative? No, we're not going to factor that. First derivative of that bad boy. It would be 1 half times this thing. 5x squared minus 12x plus 9 to the negative 1 half power times 10x minus 12. So if you had actually listed out as a fraction, it'd be 10x minus 12 over 2 square root of 5x squared minus 12x plus 9. You set that equal to 0 because when you're optimizing, you set the first derivative equal to 0. What happens to the denominator? It's gone because if we multiply both sides by the denominator, 0 times that just is fine. So 10x minus 12, so 10x equals 12, so x equals 6 fifths. So when the, what is the x value that makes it closest to the origin? It would be 1.2. Huh. Let's do that again for a curved line this time. This line kind of curves down like that. Which point would be the closest to the origin? We use the what formula? Distance, Distance formula. So it would be x2 would be x. x1 would be 0 because we're going to the origin. y2 would be this crazy thing, 2 minus 9 x minus 0 squared. So just be x squared plus, if you square this, what's 2 squared? 4 times 9 minus x. So it would be the square root of x squared plus 36 minus 4x. Now, take the first derivative of that. 
2x minus 4 over 2 square root of x squared minus 4x plus 36 equals 0. Dominator doesn't matter. x winds up to equal 2. Okay. Because we already went through the basics of it and then just quicker. Given a right triangle ABC where A, B, A, C equals 8, the whole bottom is 8, and the height is 10, the rectangle is constructed as shown in the diagram. What's the dimensions of the rectangle that would minimize the rectangle's perimeter? we got to minimize this perimeter of this thing. Well, here's the trick to this. If this is the origin, 0, 0, how far is it to here? Well, let me say that that is going to be x. And if c, because it's 8 long, if c is 8, then what's this distance from here to here? 8 minus x. Way to go. That's 8 minus x. So if x is 4, this is 4 long. If x is 6, this would be 2 long, and so on. Okay? So going up, the height-wise, this is 10, and then this is basically y, and this is 10 minus y, right? Okay. Now, um, how do we figure out the height of y? Well, the way this works is by slope. What's the slope of this line right here, this diagonal line? What's the rise over the run? 10 over 8, which is? 5 over 4. 5 over 4x. So I can figure out the height of it depending on how far I am this way. So if I'm 4 over, I'm 5 high. If I'm 2 over, then I'm 2.5 high, and so on. Okay? So this is my y, my height. And then my length is this. Okay? What's the formula for a perimeter? 2 times the light base plus 2 times the height. So if we do that, it'd be 16 minus 2x plus 10 fourths or 5 halves x. 5 halves is 2 and a half. So perimeter equals 16 plus 0.5x. What's the first derivative of this? 0.5. Well, if the derivative is 0.5, it doesn't say, and we set the first derivative equals 0. Is 0.5 equal to 0? No. So can we find a size to minimize this perimeter? And the answer is no. There is no such rectangle. The so much.